is samadhi and self realization are same well uh, these you know two words they come from two different um, what do you call traditions samadhi is the word that is used in yoga tradition in sankhya tradition self realization is you can uh, uh, translate it uh, into sanskrit as the atmagyan or a self knowledge knowing what you are which comes from the advait tradition you see if we, if we want to compare them then i see the samadhi as a result of self realization isn't it the self realization needs to happen only once how many times are you going to know who you are only once and then the result of this knowledge is sitting in between the experience and the experiencer when you sit in between the experience and the experiencer that is samadhi samadhi means balanced intellect sam means balance dhi is intellect like buddhi or bodhi uh, when you are in this state that means the uh, uh, intellect is not going too much into the experience like not involved in it and is not like hunting for who is experiencing like who is there who is there you know, that is madness also and then uh, it is in between it is sitting in uh, uh, nicely comfortably in between both these two uh, dualities you see and that is sagun samadhi instead of so, sorry uh, savikalp samadhi instead of the nirvikalp which means uh, we know we know there are uh, two uh, dimensions here the, the duality is here but we are okay with it that is the savikalp samadhi nirvikal is kind of useless isn't it it does not last <laughs> nirvikal you will come out of the nirvikal vikal into the savikal pretty soon which i think is should not be the goal the goal should be at least for the beginner savikal samadhi which is accepting the experience as the experiencer you look at it it is just you it's just you appearing to yourself and then abide in this situation so um, let us not compare apples and oranges because samadhi is a state self realization is a realization it is a knowledge it the realization happens only once and it should happen only once you see cannot happen every day a samadhi can you can come in and out of samadhi like if there is a survival issue the samadhi is not useful you see if you are hungry if you lost your job or you want to marry and reproduce or uh, somebody is attacking your country and all samadhi is useless the body needs to go and you know do the necessary stuff necessary action and when the actions are done when there is nothing to do back into samadhi that will once you are in samadhi the karmic uh, impressions will washed away because you can see oh it is not me it, it was the body and mind acting according to its impressions according to its uh, causal um, tendencies and then back in samadhi so this is the practical advice actually and the ideal would be to stay in the nirvikalp now that is a big uh, subject isn't it according to me according to what i have uh, realized and what i have come to you know what whatever conclusions that i have come after going through all these samadhis and realizations and all kinds of knowledge is that we are always in nirvikalp samadhi always we are brahman and the uh, fundamental quality of the brahman is no quality but you cannot you cannot use your mind to know this thing so do not try to use intellect to know this thing the brahman is fundamentally nirgun which means without qualities what does that mean it is without any it is a state of nirvikalp samadhi all the time all the time the activity appears as an illusion that means it does not actually take the brahman away from nirvikalp samadhi i am always in nirvikalp samadhi this is my realization now it will be very difficult to see initially because you will say no no it's at most i can go to the savikalp and then deep sleep and death you see that is nirvikalp vikal for me no the savikalp is happening on the background of nirvikalp it's kind of very difficult word to pronounce <laughs> savikalp is happening and the sagun is happening on the background of nirgun think about this thing you see think about this thing for a week where else can it happen do not think that the nirgun is a separate state sagun is no 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 there is there is no separation of any kind you see if you make a separation between uh, savikalp and nirvikalp that is also ignorance according to me savikalp is kind of more illusory 
compared to nirvikalp which is more pure but then nirvikalp uh, uh, brahman does not come to know that it is brahman it is there is no possibility there it is <laughs> it is a sea of potentiality and when the potential expresses it becomes savikalp and uh, when the savikalp drops into maya the state drops into maya the mind gets entangled into its own creations its own potentials that is the ignorance that is no samadhi that is also called the agyan so all you can do is you know the jeev can all all the jeev can do is discard the ignorance everything else is already here all samadhi is already here discard the ignorance that you are separate that you are the mind or the body or any other experience and look at that which exp- which is experiencing that which is experiencing is empty is shunya is nirvikalp is nirgun you won't find anything there all you will find is appearances which should not take too seriously that is not the nature of the brahman the nature of the brahman is nirgun nirgunta emptiness whatever appears is also emptiness is also nirgun the gun appear because you take it too seriously you think it is real that's why the qualities they appear as real no qualities even if you cannot do that you know stay in the savikalp stay in the middle of the experience and the experiencer always 24 by 7 remind yourself you know to get in, to, into the samadhi and this is not possible if you do not know what you are if you do not know what is your ex- essence it is not possible to go in the samadhi so the first step is always knowing what you are knowing your essence which is also known as the self realization so nick i think it should clear it for you nick is saying so i am not the shunya i am the one which witnesses the shunya you are the shunya you are that which is witnessing and that which is witnessing is nothing is shunya is zero what what experience can you have of the experiencer no experience it is that place from where you are experiencing so i am not separate from the shunya shunya cannot be experienced because it is the one that is experiencing the shunya is a, not an experience it is not an object it is not any activity of the mind it is not even illusion well it is you i am emptiness that is why gautam buddh said you know there is no atman because no there is nothing here because some people have tendency to objectify the atman also oh i am atman does that mean that uh, i and atman are different i the atman that is the correct word you see the correct phrase i the atman i the shunya and shunya means an atman same thing you see <laughs> the atman is not an object that is the problem with advait people think that there are two things here the atman and brahman no there is only one thing and it is not an object it is not any activity of the mind it is the empty room and the empty room when the wind blows appears as not empty it was always empty and it will remain empty so it it was always shunya it will remain shunya it is shunya right now also if you want if you want you can call it i am shunya you can say it but uh, you see once you advance enough on the um, path of knowledge drop the i am <laughs> there is no need of i am there is no need of i i am nothing so why why carry this burden of i the shunya is you can say isness that is the last word you can say isness is brahman nirgun brahman and that's all you see that's all the language will stop here this is the end of language after that there is only being there is no knowing also the knowledge also is kind of useless after this what are what is the knowledge the knowledge that you are getting is just cleaning up of ignorance you are not knowing anything new you are just cleaning up the ignorance that is what is called knowledge so it's pretty easy to answer the two does mind still exist after death again the death is for the body the death is a event in the mind <laughs> there is no individual so the individual never dies because it was never born it was never born what was born is this experience a limited experience and the ex- limited experience goes away because that is what is the nature of the experience the experiences do not stay they keep changing so death is a change and another experience that's all there is no death actually so mind it is not even now the mind does not exist remember the mind is consciousness in motion so <laughs> did it die was it born can it uh, can it do anything at all no you see 
the death exists as an idea in the mind. The mind cannot exist after death because it was not there before death. It was not there before birth also. You see, it is illusion. And the idea of death and birth both are. And reincarnation and rebirth, they are all ideas in your mind. There is no such thing. There is no birth. There is no death. There is no rebirth. There is no re-death. <laughs> it is a continuous experience. Continuous experience. The person cannot die because the person is already non-entity. It is not present. What will die? The body changes into dust because it came from... It is an accumulation of the dust, isn't it? It is an accumulation of these five elements back to five elements. Or how, however many elements you think there are. Is hundred elements, a thousand elements. It does not make any difference. So the body was an illusion, a limited experience that came up on the screen of consciousness. And it will go away just like any other experience. If it comes up, it's okay. If it does not, it's okay. If it takes another form, another body, fine. It's all illusion. It's all illusion. Both birth and death are illusions. So do not equate mind with death. There is no relation between mind and death. Because you think that the death is going to stop the mind. No. <laughs> death is an event in the mind. The mind is primary. Like mind is more fundamental than the things that it is creating. That is why we call it the universal mind. There is no individual mind. You see the root of this uh, ignorance that there is birth and death and the mind depends on this, this body or the consciousness depends on this body. The root of this ignorance is uh, a lack of knowledge of the self. You do not know what you are. That is why you are identifying with these uh, uh, passing experiences. And that is why you see a few, some kind of relations between these experiences and you conclude that I am that. And when you see the experiences disappearing, you say that, oh, I am also disappearing. And that becomes death for you. It, it simply points to the lack of knowledge about what you are. Self-realization is the cure of this ignorance. Self-realization will cure death also. The death will disappear when you realize what you are. Can the emptiness die? <laughs> was it born? When was it born really? And who saw it taking birth? Because if there was something which saw the consciousness appearing, that means that consciousness was already present. Otherwise, how can it be seen as appearing? If somebody saw the consciousness disappearing, that means the consciousness was already present watching the disappearance of the consciousness. Isn't it? So, logically impossible to die. <laughs> oh, however, when you are identified with uh, any experience of these kinds, like uh, let's say you are identified with the physical body or the subtle body or the astral body or the causal body or any kind of body, death is sure. It is 100% guaranteed that the death will happen because these are experiences, you see. They appear and, dis and disappear. Like the whole of your experience is just a flow of activities, just a flow, a changing, you see, like dynamic consciousness, changing consciousness. That is your experience. It, it is not, never still and it will never be still. It was also never born and it, the experience will also never stop. There is no such thing as stopping of experience. So you, you can use again logic to see that uh, if the experience stops, that means there is an experience there which is of starting and stopping of experience. It is self-contradicting because this whole thing is now an experience. The experience appeared, an event. The experience stopped, another event. No experience, another event. And this is an experience, isn't it? But, but we never see it. It is not possible to do that. That means the experience is already happening within it. The tiny experience of appearing of experience and disappearing of experience has happened. So logically impossible for the experience also to stop. Logically impossible for the experiencer to disappear. When I say experiencer disappeared and you will find that it is only an idea in the mind. It is like, <laughs> like castles in the air. It is not your direct experience. This is not the reality. It is an idea in the mind that, oh, the experience will go away. But nobody has seen the experience going away. Because if you have seen it, that means you are experiencing it. And you came back to tell about the experience going away. Isn't it? That never happens. 
<laughs> everything is in the mind cooked up stories in the mind the mind is cooking up sitting here so what we do we stop this illogical activity of the mind we see what is really there we use logic and rationality to find out what the mind is saying <laughs> and we discard everything the mind is saying the mind is cooking up so no no mind before death no mind after death it is all illusion